Are you ready to finally get that frustrating closet organized? Do you want to bring order to that kitchen drawer that's been driving you crazy? Craving some order and functionality in your home overall? Here's how to organize your home, any room, any space in just five simple steps. No amount of decorating or organizing will ever fix too much clutter. Decluttering always has to come before you can organize. Technically, you can do both, declutter and organize concurrently, but for the sake of clarity, let's just talk about the actual organization process right now. I'm assuming you've decluttered, you've gotten rid of what you don't need, and we're just going to organize. I believe there are five steps to organizing. Let's take a look at those. Step one for organizing is to set clear goals. I'm not a big planner. I'm fairly certain I have some undiagnosed ADHD and planning and goal setting is really hard for me. Maybe that's you too, but maybe not. Either way, the kind of goal setting I'm talking about here is super simple. You're really just going to find your why. What's your end goal? Your why can be hugely motivating to get started and to keep you going with the task of organizing your home. So you need to define what you want to achieve with your organizing. Why do you want an organized home? Is it for easier access, better functionality, better sleep, less stress to save time or money, or even just for a more aesthetically pleasing space? Your why will keep you going when things seem overwhelming. Step two for organizing any space is to prioritize your spaces. After you've defined why you want an organized home, you need to decide which room or space needs organizing first, or if you've been doing this for a while, next. As I've mentioned when I talk about decluttering in other videos and in my courses and on my website, the place to begin is the space that will give you the quickest win. Start by asking yourself if a particular room causes the most stress for you, or drawer or closet, whatever you're working on. If the answer is yes, start organizing that space. If not, move on to this next question. Consider whether you spend a lot of time in that room or using that space or drawer or closet. If yes, start organizing there. If not, proceed to the next question, which is to determine if the room or space or drawer can be quickly organized. If yes, start organizing it. If not, move on. Ask yourself if you have the least emotional attachment to that room or the things in it. If yes, start there. If not, proceed to the next question, which is to ask yourself if you frequently misplace items in that room. Do they have a home or not? If the answer is yes, you misplace things there, start organizing that room. If not, move on to another question. Assess whether organizing that room would make a significant impact with minimal effort. If yes, start organizing there. If not, proceed to the next question, which is, do guests see that space very much? If yes, start organizing there. If not, move on. Reflect on whether you feel motivated to tackle organizing that space. If yes, start there. If not, proceed to the next question, which is, would that room benefit most from improved functionality? If yes, start organizing it. If not, move on. Assess if that room is currently causing disruption in your daily routine. If the answer is yes, start organizing it. If not, consider a different room. That's sort of my where to start flowchart list of questions. Organize the space that needs it most, but that will also give you a sense of accomplishment fairly quickly so that you keep organizing the rest of your spaces. As you go through your house and you organize more and more rooms, obviously the answers to those questions will be harder to answer. So you'll have to choose using that sort of flowchart of criteria. Are you ready to transform your home but not sure where to start? Join me for my free popular class, Embrace Your Space, where I'll share my proven process for creating a home you love to live in. In this workshop style class, you'll learn the exact steps I've used for years to turn cluttered chaos into beautiful organized areas in my home. I'm also going to teach you my foundational step to loving the home you live in, including my secret for loving your home as it is right now, even if it's nowhere near being your dream home. Don't miss this opportunity to start your journey toward a home that reflects your style and feels like you. Sign up for the free class today at homemadelovely.com 
forward slash embrace your space YT. All one word, homemadelovely.com, embrace your space YT, and take the first step to creating the home you truly love to live in. Step three in organizing any space in your home is to create zones. Now that you've determined your why and sorted your spaces in the order you need to organize, divide each room into zones based on function or category. You can do this with drawers and closets too. You can do this on paper for all your spaces at once or one at a time as you begin to work on them. Examples of zones are to create a workspace and a related zone or categorize items like books, clothes, or kitchen supplies. Think of the room in terms of how you use it. Zones increase your home's functionality and save you time. When you know how you want to use your space, you can better design the space you want. Here are a few examples of zones you can create in the living room, kitchen, and bedroom. In the living room, you can create an entertainment zone. This could include the TV, gaming consoles, and comfortable seating arranged for optimal viewing around the TV. You can also create a reading nook, a cozy corner with a comfortable chair or chaise lounge, a small table, and a bookshelf for storing books and magazines. In the kitchen, you can create a preparation zone, the area where the most food preparation takes place, typically around the countertop near the sink and or the stove. You can also create a cooking zone, which is the area around the stove and oven where cooking activities primarily occur. This can also include storage for pots, pans, and cooking utensils. In the bedroom, of course, you have a sleeping area, the main focus of the bedroom, which consists of the bed with comfortable bedding and pillows and often nightstands where you can set things down. You also could create a dressing area, a space dedicated to getting dressed, which could include a dresser or wardrobe and a mirror or possibly a vanity for applying makeup. These zones can help you organize their space more effectively and make it easier to find what you need when you need it. Step four to organizing any space is of course storage solutions. Now that you've got your zones all plotted out, it's time to invest in appropriate bins, baskets, shelves, and organizers. Choose solutions that fit the size and shape of your items and space. To help you do this, I like to use the MAXIMIZE acronym. The M is for measure your space. A is to assess negative space. In this case, negative space refers to the areas in a room that are currently unused or underutilized. After you measure and assess the space, you explore creative solutions and think outside the box. The I is to invest in a variety of storage. The next M is to maximize usable space. And then the I is to incorporate your lifestyle needs. Who uses the room? Who uses the space? Is it little kids? Is it older people? You need to choose suitable storage solutions for who uses it and your lifestyle. The Z in the maximize acronym is for zeroing in on consistency in your storage pieces. If you have open shelving, you probably want the storage pieces to at least coordinate if not match. And the final E is for extras. Buy extras and then return what you don't need. The fifth step to organizing anything is to label everything. Use labels where needed and appropriate to identify the contents of containers, shelves, drawers, etc. In a labeled home, chaos becomes clear and everything finds its place. Labels are like a map for your organized home, navigating, guiding, directing you to the designated spot and the precise place for every item. Labels make it easy for everyone in your house to put things away where they belong. Labels are the key to getting and staying organized. Labels are like a map for your organized home. They make it easy for everyone in your house to put things away where they belong. So there you have it, how to organize your home in five steps. Step one, set clear goals. Step two, prioritize your spaces. Step three, create zones. Step four, storage solutions. Step five, label everything. Those are the five steps to organize any space in your home. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful to learn the five steps to organizing your home, please give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe down below so you don't miss any of my future videos focused on creating a space you love. Mm -hmm.